Okay, so we'll try again and hopefully we've got sound. I think I know what I did wrong because I've just done it on another video. I think I moved the mouse so that the point was hovering over the mute button and I hadn't realized and it automatically mutes the video. Anyway, I'm back. Uh, my dispute with YouTube, though not fully finished, is in a better position. I was originally pulled on some videos, got a community strike. I appealed was upheld was told the community strike would be removed then I got pulled on some more videos and got another community strike and my uploading capability was disabled even though that's not supposed to happen until you get to three strikes three weeks later they finally removed the third strike that they said they were going to remove and I've had two emails now one saying my appeals not been upheld for the second lot of videos and one saying my appeal has been upheld so I don't know what's going on and unfortunately, I can't contact them. I contact tech support, which sounds to be in India, and they just hang up as soon as you say anything. I contact the UK officers. They don't deal with YouTube, and they're fucking useless. And they just said, go through the help menu. There should be an email box, which there isn't on mine for some reason. And then I rang America, and after waiting for half an hour, I got to speak to someone. And because I didn't answer the question immediately, they said, if you're not going to answer, we're just going to hang up and hung up. So they're fucking useless. But I got two colleagues that run channels to email them on my behalf. And it looks like that's worked. So I'm back for now. Right. So what's been happening? I've got hay fever. That's one thing that's been happening. Training's going a lot better. That's another thing that's been happening. In fact, measured the old guns today. And we are back up at 24 um training's going really hard actually really enjoying it uh but it is very hard um luckily i've got tomorrow off and i fucking need it <laughs> on other news uh oh yeah did a conference in colchester a couple of weeks ago um called out of the dark for the open road project and there was myself, Jim McVeigh, who heads up uh, a department in Huddersfield, Huddersfield, sorry, Liverpool, John Moore's University Hospital. Jim's been around in the harm reduction scene. He's on the ACMD committee for a long, long time. There was Susan Backhouse from uh, Leeds Beckett, uh, Ian Bordley, Dr. Ian Bordley from Birmingham, myself, and these two drongos from Australia. Uh, Katrina van der 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 der, something like that. They spoke about the steroids in Australia are Schedule 1, basically the same as cocaine, and Class A is over here. And this was decided because it was deemed that steroids were supplied via organised crime chains, namely biker gangs, and their study shows that this isn't true. Well, it's quite fucking obvious it's not true because the bulk of steroids in the Australia come from the UK. Uh, but anyway, so I didn't see the relevance and it just seemed to be a study for the sake of a study. But it is a bit of a hot topic in Australia at the moment. I mean, speaking to SBS TV over there, who actually are interviewing me tomorrow afternoon, uh, because they are questioning whether the law needs to change and they need to be decriminalized and allow more support to users because the law isn't working. Um, anyway. Uh, Jim talks about general steroid use. Susan talks about use in 16 to 19 year olds at school who were involved in rugby. So this was a, probably a, quite a few private schools involved in this, and it wasn't just steroids, it was all supplement use, but steroids were included. Uh, and I think the user levels were about 20%, 22, 23%. Um, and then, or it may have been the perceived user levels were about that. And then... Um, Ian talks about moral disengagement. Now, Ian's a bit of a monotone speaker, but um, the context was good, if a bit techy. Uh, basically, there's eight, eight things that we do to justify the things we do when we know we shouldn't do them. Um, for example, everybody else is doing it. XYZ does more than me. Yeah, but those people do other things that are harmful. The big one for steroids is, yeah, but people drink and smoke. So that has no relevance. You are taking a drug that's potentially harmful. Well, as I'll go on in later videos that I'm soon to post, is, is harmful. 
Uh, and what difference does it make if Susan down the road smokes 20 a day and drinks a bottle of vodka a night? She's not you, and I'm not talking about her health, I'm talking about your health. So it has no fucking relevance at all. But things like that, that uh, everybody's doing it, or I need to do it to succeed at what I do. So all these sort of things are how we moralistically deal with a negative that we choose to do. Uh, so that was quite interesting, and then I talked about social drivers and social impact. Uh, only problem was, I was the key speaker as well, so last on, headline the show job, which I didn't find out till I got there. Um, I knew I was last on, I didn't realise the significance of it till I got there. Um, my presentation corrupted, so I basically had to wing it, so I sort of wrote a few notes while I was sat listening to other people's presentations. Um, good day, though. I talked about body image, uh, community drivers, different user groups, social pressures, competitive pressures, work-related pressures to drive towards usage. And then I, I spoke about mental dependency, which is fact related studies by Pope. But coming in around 60-70% of users are dependent. And the strange thing was I was saying this two fucking years ago and was told I was a dick and shut my fucking mouth by the academic community uh, and that, that, that's grossly exaggerated Dave you fucking no 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 oh look actually I was fucking right fuck you you twats um, anyway so those sort of things uh, and how usage feeds usage and, and how usage worsens body image issues and, and how exposure to the fitness community worsens body image issues etc etc and how body image issues and eating disorders and usage normalize within the user community. So that sort of shit. Uh, and then I got back to an email from a production company that works for the BBC, wanting to meet me on the panel for the big questions live on the BBC on Sunday morning. It's available on BBC iPlayer if you're interested with Nikki Campbell. And they had two questions. One was about knife crime. And one was about should drugs be allowed in sports. And they had the, uh, a gentleman in Australia who was a doctor at Oxford University. Uh, and his whole argument was they're in sports anyway. Let's focus on mm, monitoring health markers rather than trying to detect drug use. So everyone worked off an even playing field when it came to health markers. My argument was that UKAD and WADA don't do fuck all. They're ineffective. Uh, and so just to visualize it, um, I do in powerlifting and strongman and, and bodybuilding. And uh, the one from UKAD was, we, we brought the subject of uh, medical exemptions and she was basically trying to receive pre-rehearsed set pattern responses to questions that didn't answer the secondary questions. So I, I posed that, that this was a useless system <clears throat> and uh, she said, oh, but it's verified by doctors. I said, no, the person isn't verified, just the paperwork's verified. And she wouldn't engage in that, that challenge. Um, with it only being 20 minutes, we didn't really get into anything, which was unfortunate. Uh, and Nikki was actually very supportive about hearing both sides of the argument. But it just wasn't going to happen in the time that we had. And I sort of knew that going into it. I wanted to get into how UKAD and WADA are just basically pawns. Their PR movements to keep the public happy because the big picture and finances behind it. They don't want to fully remove drugs because if they fully remove drugs, they will remove performance times in both distance and speed and height and everything else. And no one wants to see someone who's slightly better than you. Everybody wants to see the extremes. And so they would find records wouldn't get broken anymore. So there's a fine balance between making it appear healthy and uh, making it commercially viable. Anyway, so that was that. That seemed to go quite well. And that's really sort of it. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been up to. So I do believe the little shit's returned from school. Hello, little shit. Hi, Dad. Yes, little shit is back. So... I'm going to get off, uh, and hopefully the sound's working on this one, and I can get it up and posted. So I'll speak to you guys soon.